In the last installment of my year in review in running shoes, we took a look at carbon plated racers. Today, we're gonna look at the shoes you wear the day after you do those long marathon workouts. These are my top five max cushion shoes of 2022. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I wanna to talk to you guys about my top five Max Cushion shoes of 2022. These are the recovery shoes, the long run shoes, the shoes that you put on when your feet are beat up and you just wanna be pampered. But before I tell you guys my picks, I do wanna go over some disclosures. Some of these shoes were sent to me for the purpose of review so I didn't have to pay for them and some of them I bought myself. I'll put more detail about that in the description down below. But no matter how a shoe gets to me, no one is paying me to make this video or to include their shoe on this list. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about my top five Max Cushion shoes of 2022. This year, this group looks a lot different than it looked last year. So there's some surprises, I think, but I think some of the things won't be all that surprising. Let's just get into it. First, my favorite is an update to my favorite Max Cushion shoe of last year. It's the Fresh Foam X More version four from New Balance. Last year, pretty much the only problem I had with the shoe was that the upper was really puffy. There was a lot of armor back here in the heel and it just got really hot. So for 2022, they went and fixed all of those things. We have a minimally padded tongue, not that much padding in the heel, no armor at all, although there's a little bit of structure internally. But overall, the upper is pretty much stripped down, at least as far as max cushion shoes go. And not only that, they went one better and they even improved the ride of the midsole. So they took the Fresh Foam X of last year and tweaked it to make it airier, lighter, and a little bit bouncier than last year while still maintaining that nice level of sink in cushionness that you get. So you got a really nice combo of comfort and quick decompression for a shoe that's livelier than a shoe this big really should be. It doesn't make sense when you're looking at it, but it's oh so good once you put it on. You can use this shoe to log all sorts of miles. It's super durable. There's a lot of rubber on this outsole to protect all this lovely foam, and you're gonna be really comfortable when you're doing it. It's also pretty comfortable to wear around casually as well, and I feel like looks pretty good too for a shoe that's this big. So because it kind of does everything that I want a Max Cushion shoe to do, and it does it so well in a way that I almost can't believe, the Fresh Foam More version four is my favorite Max Cushion shoe of 2022. Coming up in number two behind it is probably what you would think of when you think of Max Cushion shoes. This is the Bondi 8. I really enjoy the way that they've changed the way that this foam looks. It looks less blocky. It looks less like a shoe that you would wear at your orthopedist's office or in a kitchen. And now it actually looks more like a running shoe. So I appreciate some of these updates that they're making. I also feel like they've incorporated a lot of what they learned with their Bondi X experiment, which was a plated version of the Bondi that came out last year. Some of those learnings are trickling over into the regular Bondi in the Bondi 8. And I feel like overall, it's a shoe that feels lighter and rolls a lot smoother and you're still getting a lot of comfort while you're doing it as you're protecting your feet from the road in this ultra high stack. So that's why the Bondi 8 is my number two Max Cushion shoe of 2022. Number three is going to be a little bit of a controversial choice for some of you guys because I think some of you guys are using the shoe for workouts and I don't think that's wrong but I still also feel like this shoe belongs in the Max Cushion category just because it is so tall and it is so comfy. This is the Super Comp Trainer from New Balance. It is a super stack shoe because it's more than 40 millimeters of stack height in the heel, which makes it technically illegal to run marathon races in. But that's only gonna be a problem if you're trying to win the race and get some prize money or set a world record. For the rest of us normies out there, this shoe is gonna be just absolutely fine. And a lot of people had this on their feet when I ran the New York City Marathon. I saw this shoe all 
over the place. I love what they're doing with the fuel cell in this shoe and they make it nice and squishy. And the way they have the shoe set up, it makes you wanna land in the midfoot or towards the heel. So for those of you who are midfoot heel strikers, you're gonna be really getting a lot of the benefit of that squishy foam. And they have it set up kind of like in a two wall construction uh, with this energy arc channel in the bottom that helps keep everything moving forward in a nice way and also lets that foam deflect really nicely and squish down so you can take advantage of that full stack height. It's not just stack height for stack height's sake. It does have a carbon fiber plate and it can get moving quick if you really need it to when you wanna get up on the toes. But for me, I like it the most when I'm really chill and going nice and easy. I can wear this because this upper is so comfortable. Again, I love a good knit upper and this one is fantastic. I can use this for my long runs, for my recovery runs. It feels really great to be in this shoe. And when I'm on those easier runs, I'm a little bit more chill. I'm a little bit more back on the foot when I'm running. And so that's when I feel like this shoe agrees with me the most when I'm using it in kind of max cushion recovery mode. So that's why I'm putting this shoe at number three on my top five max cushion shoes. Number four is another perennial favorite on the Max Cushion shoe list, and that's the Triumph 20. I feel like they've continued to improve on this shoe since I started running in it in the 17, I wanna say. And again, like a lot of the shoes in this category, they've been evolving over the years and realizing that plushness and comfort happen from the mid sole down and not necessarily in the puffiness of the upper. So we've lost a lot of the excess like memory foam, sweat sponge type of padding, although there is a lot of comfort up here. There's still some here. So it's not like it's super stripped down, but I feel like it's just what it needs to be comfortable. And you got plenty of room in this really comfortable mesh upper toe box. And then it's that power run plus midsole foam here. It's that beaded foam that works really well, absorbs impact from the road, but also is a nice lively foam. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but you could even use this for your strides if it's an easy run with just a couple of strides thrown in. The shoe is really willing to pick up the pace. So it has the versatility of a daily trainer, but it's got a little bit more stack height and it can absorb a little bit more impact from the road when you're in the shoe. And so it's still for me, falls in that max cushion category and it is one of the top five for 2022. Last on this list is a shoe that I've been meaning to try it for years, but only finally got to try it this year, and that is the Glide Ride 3, and I'm really glad that I got a chance to try it. It's also pretty much brand new for this year as well, although it still has that kind of like guide sole technology where it kind of rolls you forward with some of the geometry that's built into the shoe. But in terms of the changes, they have a FF Blast Plus layer up top, which is ASIC's lightest and bounciest daily training foam. It's not their racing foam, but it is one of their better daily training foams. And then underneath that is a layer of flight foam, which is a layer that is a little bit firmer. So they got two really nice foams in the shoe put together, sandwiched in between this layer here, which is not exactly a plate. I forget exactly what they told me it was. I think it's like a, that hardened EVA isn't right, but it's not a rubber kind of like insert either, but it's kind of like, that's probably like the closest thing that I can compare it to. And so it has kind of like plate like stabilizing function. So even though this isn't a stability shoe, I feel like when I put this on on a recovery day and like everything is wobbly weak and kind of squirrely, this kind of acts a lot like a stability shoe because of the way it always wants to roll in that particular way. And it has some of those stability like functions without being a stability shoe, which is a type of shoe that I generally can't run in. And because it has that FF Blast Plus up top, it makes it for a nice soft experience, even though it doesn't feel like the tallest shoe underfoot. It does go a little bit heavy with the padding back here in the heel cup, but overall it's a really comfy shoe to both wear casually. I've been using it to travel quite a bit and it works really well on airplanes where my feet tend to swell a lot. And it's also really nice to run in and really versatile. It can do pretty much all the things you need a daily trainer to do and it does it in a really comfy cushion package. So those are my top five max cushion shoes for 2022. Let me know which max cushion shoes I missed in the comments down below. I'd love to know what's been working out for you guys. Or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs. And I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?